Stanford University. Well, now I want to look at the anterior surface of the heart, put in the various boundaries, and show the great veins and arteries which are attached to the heart, and then finally put in the coronary arteries and the coronary veins. Now, if this is the right margin of the heart, we can carry it down here, indicating the right edge of the right atrium, and then we carry it round onto the diaphragmatic surface of the heart, and this is the lower margin of the right atrium and the lower margin of the right ventricle. Finally, we come to the region of the apex of the heart. So we're now going into the left ventricle and up the left margin of the heart, which is formed by the left ventricle. Now I'll indicate here the position of the groove which exists between the right atrium on this side and the anterior surface of the right ventricle. And I'll indicate the groove here coming down towards the apex of the heart, and this groove is the indicates the position of the anterior margin of the ventricular septum with the left ventricle on this side and the right ventricle here. So this is right ventricle, this is left ventricle, and this is the right atrium. Now, at the upper end of the right atrium, we see there's a small outpouching here, which I'll indicate in this manner, which is the right auricular appendix. In the same way, coming round from the back of the heart, we have from the left atrium, the left auricular appendix. So this is the left auricular appendix, and this is the right auricular appendix. Now I think we should put in the position of the large veins. We'll indicate here the cut upper end of the superior vena cava, draining down into the right atrium, so that this is the superior vena cava, and coming up into the lower part of the right atrium, I'll show the cut lower edge of the inferior vena cava, in that sort of manner. Now, coming out of the upper end of the left ventricle, with the, we have the ascending aorta, and the ascending aorta is going to come up and become continuous with the arch of the aorta, and pass over in that direction, in that sort of manner, coming down and becoming continuous with a descending thoracic aorta. And here's the other margin, which I'll just pass up to that sort of position for the moment, so that this indicates the position of the ascending aorta becoming continuous with the arch of the aorta, which in turn becomes continuous with the descending uh, thoracic aorta. And then just to indicate the with a slightly different color, the posi position of the pulmonary trunk, which is emerging from the upper end of the right ventricle, this is the infundibulum, we have the pulmonary trunk, which immediately, almost immediately divides into the uh, uh, left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery, and so we can show it coming over in this direction like that. And we can also indicate a position of a very important structure going across between the arch of the aorta and the uh, pulmonary trunk, the ligamentum arteriosum. And so if we want to be absolutely accurate here, we could bring down the vagus nerve and show the recurrent laryngeal nerve arching round underneath there and going up on the left side as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So then, on the anterior surface of the heart, we have the right atrium, the right auricular appendix, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left auricular appendix. Now, where are the coronary arteries? The right coronary artery arises from the anterior surface of the beginning of the ascending aorta and immediately passes down in this atrioventricular groove. And on reaching the lower margin of the heart, it passes onto its under aspect, onto its diaphragmatic surface. Just about this point, it gives off a marginal artery, which runs along the lower margin of the heart in that manner. 
Now, of course, it has given off branches here, which supply the, vent uh, the ventricular musculature and the atrial musculature on each side. Now, coming down on the other side, we have the left coronary artery. Now, the left coronary artery has arisen from behind here, from the back of the ascending aorta, and it is passed behind the pulmonary trunk here, and part of the artery, the main part of the artery, is going over onto the posterior surface of the heart in that direction, with a branch coming forward and down here, the anterior infant interventricular branch of the left uh, of the left coronary artery, and this anterior interventricular branch is going to supply the left ventricle on one side and the right ventricle on the other side. So we have the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery, which goes behind the pulmonary trunk and then goes over the back of the heart with the anterior interventricular branch coming round to the apex of the heart. Please note that the apex of the heart is formed by the left ventricle. Now, where are the veins? Well, we have a large vein here which drains into the anterior surface through the anterior surface of the right atrium. It's called the anterior cardiac vein. And we have running up alongside the anterior interventricular artery here, the great cardiac vein. And of course, it goes over the back of the heart and drains into the coronary sinus. Right coronary artery, anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery, anterior cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, going over to the back of the heart to drain into the sinus venosus of the heart. Are there any questions on this area? Yes, Dr. Snell. I wonder, do the right and left coronary arteries anastomose? Well, if you uh, look at this uh, diagram, you'll see that I've indicated there are branches from the right coronary artery and branches from the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. And in dissections, you can actually trace them across and they do anastomose with one another. But the point I wish to emphasize is that although they join together, the anastomosis is insufficient to functionally maintain an area of cardiac muscle. So that if you should get blockage of one of the main branches of one or other of the coronary arteries, then that area of the heart muscle will die. And this, of course, is known as myocardial infarction. If we turn the heart round and look at its posterior aspect, we can see the arrangement of the different parts of it relative to one another. For example, this will be the region of the apex of the heart. In other words, this is the back of the left ventricle coming round onto the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. And then over here, we can indicate the position of the right atrium. And we can indicate the position of the groove coming up here between the right atrium and the left atrium. And here is the groove coming down in this direction for the coronary sinus. So let us put some of the things in, some of the larger vessels in, in relation to these chambers. We have here the inferior vena cava, which is coming up into the lower part of the right atrium. And then, of course, coming down and above, we have the superior vena cava draining down into the upper part of the right atrium. And then up in the posterior aspect here, we can show a part of the pulmonary trunk. with it bifurcating on that side, on the right side, as it's passing over towards the hilum of the lung. And then, of course, we mustn't forget, we have the arch of the aorta coming over here. And we can put in the important ligamentum arteriosum going up from the pulmonary trunk to the undersurface of the arch of the aorta. Now, on the back, or here, posterior aspect of the left atrium, we can indicate the position of the pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium from the left side and coming in from the right side. 
Note, there are two from each lung, so that this is the posterior aspect of the left atrium with the, the, the right and the left pulmonary veins bringing oxygenated blood back from the lungs into the heart. And now to complete this picture, I think we should put in the great cardiac vein coming over onto the posterior aspect of the heart in this groove between the left ventricle and the left atrium and passing down, expanding as it's going, to become the coronary sinus. And of course it is down in this corner that the coronary sinus opens into the right atrium of the heart. So let's look at this once more. Posterior surface of the left ventricle, posterior surface of the apex of the heart, posterior surface of the left atrium, the four pulmonary veins, posterior surface of the right atrium, the inferior vena cava draining up into the right atrium, the superior vena cava draining down into the top of the right atrium, posterior surface of the pulmonary trunk, and the arch of the aorta. Note the great cardiac vein becoming the coronary sinus, which is draining down into the right atrium. So the right, so, so, so this posterior surface, the left atrium, is directly related to the esophagus, which will come down behind the heart in this area. Now, let us build up the heart from the anterior surface, leaving the anterior wall of the right atrium open and the anterior wall of the right ventricle open so that we can see the inside of these two chambers. All right, well, then we'll put down here the margin of the left ventricle coming down to the apex of the heart and then coming around here the lower margin of the heart and the lower margin of the right atrium. And we'll indicate here the position of the groove between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Now over in this side of the heart we will cut open the heart and flap back the wall in this sort of manner, showing the cut edge here and the cut edge down here, so that we have taken off the anterior surface and turned it over, so that you're looking on the inner side of the anterior wall. And these strands covered of muscle covered by endocardium of the musculi pectinati. And just as we have up here, the interior of the right auricular appendage. Now we'll carry around the margin of the right ventricle in this sort of manner, showing the irregular surface of the interior of the right ventricle with the moderator band going across to the septal wall and coming over here and thinning down as we go into the right atrium again. Now we'll put in the, some of the great vessels so that we can see where we are located. Here is the inferior vena cava coming up into the lower part of the right atrium. And here's the superior vena cava coming down into the upper part of the right atrium. And then we can show the ascending aorta passing up here in this sort of manner with the stump of the right coronary artery coming off the anterior surface of the ascending aorta. And then just in the corner here, we can indicate the beginning of the pulmonary trunk coming uh, from the upper surface here, upper end of the right ventricle, so that our groove comes down something like that, the interventricular groove between the right right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now what can we see inside the right atrium? Well first of all on the septal wall we can see the annulus ovalis which you remember embryologically is the lower margin of the septum secundum and this sweeps down and becomes continuous with a valve-like structure which is really a sort of imperfect valve for the inferior vena cava. If you put your finger down here, 
you go on the other side of that cusp of the valve of the inferior vena cava and so come down into the inferior vena cava. So this is the annulus ovalis, and this area here is the fossa ovalis. Now on this side here, we have the opening of the coronary sinus, uh, guarded by a little cusp, little valve cusp, and if you put your finger in there, you go into the coronary sinus. Now this region here is the opening into the right ventricle. So here is the right atrioventricular orifice. And so we can indicate the position of the septal cusp of the right atrioventricular valve. Here's the cusp, the septal cusp, and attached to its ends are the quarter tendinii, which go down to the muscles, the papillary muscles, which are attached to the lower ends of these uh, corda tendinii. So that the septal wall of the right atrium is smooth, apart from this annulus ovalis and the fossa ovalis, the valve for the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus valve. The anterior wall of the right atrium, on the other hand, is roughened by this muscular pectinati fibers. This area here, the junction between the smooth and the roughened surface, is known as the crista terminalis. And it is at the upper end of this crista terminalis, in this region here, which we have the pacemaker, the sinoatrial, va the sinoatrial node. The atrioventricular node is situated in an area here, just above the division between the right atrium and the right ventricle. It's underneath the endocardium. And this is the atrioventricular node, which leads into the atrioventricular bundle. And the bundle passes downwards, medial to behind this cusp, the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve, and divides very quickly into two parts. One branch going down on the left side of the ventricular septum, and the right branch coming down under the endocardium on the right side of the septum and passing forward in the modulator band to the anterior wall of the right ventricle. So this is the conducting system of the heart. The sinoatrial node here, on the upper part of the crista terminalis, the atrioventricular node here, just close to the valve, the atrioventricular bundle dividing on the upper part of the septum into the left branch and the right branch. And the right branch goes down the right side of the septum under the endocardium and forward on the modulator band and then is distributed as the Purkinje plexus. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University please visit us at med.stanford.edu. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.